Hi everyone. If you are like me, then you've watched many, many, many hours of people on YouTube making the most amazing historically inspired clothing. This also means you're probably as intimidated as me to actually try and make any of this yourself. So please join me today as I'm finally going to stop watching all these videos and try and cheat my way through making my own Edwardian-ish blouse. The easy way. At least, I hope so. Now, let's start on the front pattern. I'm tracing one half of the front of my top and adding the extra centimeters that I measured to the shoulder and the armhole. The front part is going to exist out of two main parts, the bottom part and the top part, sometimes also called a yoke. Finally, you have the collar, but I'm not actually gonna make a pattern for the collar because I just intend to use lace, which is basically gonna be a strip of lace. As you can see, the yoke and the bottom part are divided by a slanted line. This gives the front yoke a V shape. I plan to make the top out of any sort of lacy fabric and ruffle the bottom part of the top. Next, we're gonna trace the back. It's pretty similar to the front. Once again, I trace around my old shirt, adding the extra centimeters where needed. Make sure your shirt is laying flat because you're basically tracing the seams of your old shirt into your paper. The back also consists of three parts. The top, or once again the yoke, the bottom part, and the collar, which once again I'm not going to trace. This time, the yoke and the bottom are divided by a straight line. I once again plan to make the top out of lace and gather the bottom. Now I've added seam allowance all around the yoke and the armholes. I've added double seam allowance on the middle back seam. This is where I want to be a keyhole and a button. Next, fold your pattern paper and cut out your pattern. The back yoke is the only piece that cannot be cut on the fold because I need two separate pieces to make sure I can get in and out of my blouse. Also, please add seam allowance to the rest of your bottom pieces. I'm not sure why I didn't, but please do. The top of the lower pieces, on both the front and the back, needs seam allowance added to them. You can either do this when cutting your fabric or add it to the pattern by taping some extra pa paper to your pattern and adding it this way. Finally, let's do the enormous over the top super fluffy sleeves. I don't have any clothing with big sleeves at the moment which is probably a big part of why I'm making this blouse. So let's start with any regular sleeve. Here I'm using a pyjama shirt, so it's not too tight and I don't have to worry about holes when I trace it with my tracing wheel. Hold your paper and align your top of your sleeve with the fold. Trace around one half of your sleeve and mark if it's the front or the back that you traced. Now flip over your paper to the other side. Also, flip your sleeve to the other side and trace once again. My tracing wheel wasn't doing for me on the back, so I just put my finger where the seam was and traced it that way. Make sure your front and back sleeves are lined up. And ta-da! 
Here we have our standard sleeve pattern. Now to make it puffy. Very puffy. Here's a very bad shot of me measuring where I want the poof to start, which is a bit above my elbow. Next I'm gonna mark that with a straight line on my sleeve pattern. The straight line I just draw is already divided by my middle line, but I'm gonna divide it twice more so it's divided in four parts. Next we're gonna cut into this. Make sure not to cut all the way through on the edges of your pattern, so you can pivot your pattern. Next, place your pattern on pattern paper and make sure your pattern is spread out evenly. Now, put on some pattern weights or anything that's within hand reach that you're not using at the moment and once again trace around the sleeve. Once you get to the top, make sure to also give it some added height. This really should help with the puff. I also mark on my pattern the first slits on either side as places for me to start my gathers. Also, say hello to my boyfriend trying not to stand on my pattern. Here I mark the front and back of the pattern and then I cut it out. When I look at American's Duchess video, you can see her sleeves pattern are shaped a bit differently than what I end up with, which I might actually adjust the pattern to next time. Also, she has some really interesting facts about cutting the lower part of the sleeve on the bias, so I really recommend you go watch her video, I have it linked in the description. Finally, I'm marking where I want my lace cuff to be with the actual lace I'm planning to use to make the cuffs, but I'm not actually cutting it off because I hope to reuse this pattern, which might result in a different width of cuff. And that's basically it. I'm putting some final information on my pattern just after I made it while it's still fresh, like where to add extra seam allowance and how many I need to cut of each piece. I ended up using this pattern with some old tablecloths of my grandma to use a blouse, which will be part 2 in this miniseries, but of course I'll give you guys a sneak peek on how it turned out. And I promise I only had to insert one strip of lace in the front to make this beautiful blouse. Cue awkward posing in the park.